Okay, so today's topic is reflection. And you guys should have some familiarity with reflection because you've probably seen a mirror before. So I'm going to start off by talking about a couple of vocabulary words you guys need to know. Um, regular or specular reflection is where you basically have a perfectly flat surface. And when you have a perfectly flat surface, the rules of reflection are basically why Newton thought things were particles. That's why he thought light was a particle. Because when it bounces in, it bounces out at exactly the same angle. Um, from a math point of view, have you guys ever seen a graph that looks like this with like a V in math? It's called an absolute value graph, like y equals the absolute value of x. Basically, the idea of this is that if I were to cut it directly in half, if I were to calculate this angle right here, well, the other half is the exact same. That's actually what this little dotted line here tries to represent. And so we can actually represent this with mathematical formulas if we wanted to. We, we don't, but we could. Okay. So regular deflection is where you have such a smooth surface that when light bounces in, it bounces out at exactly the same angle over and over and over again. And if you had like a nice clear day where the lake looked like this, you can almost see like the exact mirror image, which is so cool. You guys have probably seen that before, right? Okay, but then you have what's known as irregular or diffuse reflection. And here, the surface is not a nice smooth surface. But the same law applies though. Okay? Whatever angle something bounces in at and it hits a surface, it bounces out at like the exact same angle. I didn't draw that very nicely, but assume these angles were like the exact same measure as each other. Well, if these start going off at angles, you can kind of see how when this one bounces in, sure it bounces that way, but rather than all these rays being parallel, they kind of go in all different directions. Okay. For example, like, I don't know, I guess I'll just use the one that's in my notes. Right? When the lake looks like this, can I kind of see the reflection of the trees? I think so. Like, I think there's kind of like a tree kind of right around there. But it's nowhere near as good. So we're going to assume, unless otherwise told, that if we're working with a mirror, like it's a flat edge mirror of good quality. Okay. But this could come up, the word diffuse and secular. So just know those words. Okay, um, I need to show you guys a bunch of key terms that we're going to use when we label diagrams. I'm going to come back to the terms if I could. I'm going to show you the diagram first and then come back to the words. I probably should have changed the order of these. So let's show you some pictures of some ray diagrams we're going to use. If we have light that is like, it doesn't have to be light, by the way. It can be any type of wave. But if you have something that goes in and reflects off a surface, the words we use are incident and reflected. Incident is coming in. That's how I remember it. And reflected, I think that hopefully seems obvious, right? This line that I drew right here, this dotted line, it's called a normal line. And you guys probably learned about Fn last year in Physics 20, the normal force. A normal force is always perpendicular at 90 degrees. So that's basically the idea. Is this is a line that's always at 90 degrees that cuts it directly in half. Okay. So incidence comes in, reflected comes out. Normal is if you were to cut it directly in half at 90 degrees. And uh, whatever angle you have right here, should equal whatever angle you have right there. So let me go back to the words on the previous page now. A ray diagram is what we're going to show a lot of today. If you've looked through the notes at all, there's a lot of pictures. Okay, This is a very like theoretical kind of visual lesson. There's a little bit of math to do. You're probably going to hate the theory and like the math, probably. Because the math is pretty straightforward. There's just a formula, you plug numbers in. But trying to like interpret these diagrams, like it makes my head hurt a little bit. So, anyways, incident, incoming, reflected, outgoing. Point of incident I didn't describe. That's basically where it touches the surface. And uh, we're going to talk about this term a little bit more later. The idea of a virtual image. Okay, I'm going to get to that in a second. Actually, no. I can describe that using this diagram right here. I know not all of you can see this little mirror right now, but for those of you who kind of get the concept here. As I'm looking in the mirror right here, I can see the bottom half of this marker right here. The light is literally reflecting off this marker, bouncing off the mirror, and coming to me. And I can see this object in the mirror right there. Okay. But the object that I see in the mirror, we call that a virtual image because it appears as though it's coming from behind the mirror. Like it's playing like an optical illusionary trick on me. Does that make sense at all? 
So if you ever like see an object in a mirror, clearly there's not a person like standing behind the mirror. My, my one-year-old loves looking in the mirror, right? Because she sees herself in the mirror and is like, oh, there's a person there, right? She thinks there's actually somebody on the other side of the glass. But there's not. You're just seeing a reflection, okay? What it appears to you to be like, I almost want to like go, ah, there it is back there. That's a virtual image. And I'm going to try to describe that better on future slides. So. Come take a look at that, by the way, at some point, and kind of see how the optical illusion works. So here's a slide that tries to describe what I was talking about here. This is the idea of a virtual image. Okay? Imagine that there is an object right here. Let's just make it a crescent moon. Let's imagine that you are right here looking at that mirror. Okay? What's going to happen is light is going to hit this object right here. It's going to bounce off of this object in all different directions. One of those light rays is going to go like this, hit the mirror, and bounce back towards your eye. And therefore, you are going to be able to see this object in the mirror. But where does your brain interpret the object as being? Your brain interprets it as though it's over here, as though you were like reaching into the mirror to see the person inside there. Does that make sense? Just like my one-year-old thinks there's actually another baby on the other side of the mirror, but there's not. So that's what this picture right here describes. Let's say that somebody were to look over here. Let's say there was a, another eyeball over here. And this eyeball tried to look right there. Is there actually something there, though? No. That's what makes this a virtual image, is that your brain perceives that that's where it's coming from. Okay, I've got lots of slides that kind of illustrate this. So I'm sorry, I'm going to be very redundant today, because it's like just as many pictures as I could find. Here's another picture kind of illustrating the concept. Let's say that this is a light source right here. And um, this light source sends off rays in all sorts of different directions. It sends some that way, and sends some this way, and this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And let's say that I was a person sitting right about here. Let's say there's a person right here looking. Let's say there was a big wall in the way, by the way. There was a wall that went right here. Can this person see that source right now directly? No, because there's a wall in the way. But can I look at the mirror and see it right here? Yes. And my perception of it would be as though it was right there. Now, we're pretty smart as humans, so we are able to like retrain our brains into thinking, okay, I know it's not actually over here. We know it's over here, but our brain kind of thinks that it's in this location right here. Okay? But if a person right here were to look at this same spot right there, they would see nothing. If a person right here, though, were to look in the mirror, they would also perceive the image to be in the exact same spot. And that's how I've set up that pen right now, is that the mirror image reflection is set up in the exact same spot as where the original is on opposite sides of the mirror. So you almost can't even tell. Magicians use this a lot in their tricks. Okay. When magicians design tricks to make things disappear, they're using mirrors to try to like split objects and make it appear as though it's in one spot. But really, it's like a clone that's like behind a curtain or off stage. And that's what you're seeing instead. Okay. More pictures of, again, the exact same concept. Do you guys feel like you get this idea here? I can explain it more, but like the theory is tricky. Like it, you know, this person thinks that it's back here. This person thinks it's there. This person thinks it's there. This person here would see nothing because it's not actually there. Okay, moving on. Okay, the more complicated type of mirror are the curved ones. And you've probably seen them before. The classic example that I put in my notes is like um, you're at a convenience store and they want to make sure no one steals candy from the back aisle. And they put one of these big curved mirrors there so that you can like see down below. They also put like mirrors like this on say trucks so that you can have like a bit of a wider view when you're trying to like look through your, your side view mirrors. Okay. So the two words that we use for them are called concave convex. Maybe you've heard that before. Okay. Here's how I remember them. Okay. It's actually the exact same sort of curvy shape. It just depends on which way you're looking at it. If you are looking into the bowl, you're going into the cave. Yeah, you've heard this idea before. So if you're looking into the bowl shape side of it, that's concave. If you're looking into the outside of it, it's convex. And again, like you probably have seen like looking into a spoon before, a spoon is a really good example of concave and convex. 
If you look into one side, you can see yourself. If you look into the other side, you're actually upside down. Anyone ever tried that before or seen that? If you guys would like, try not to get too distracted, but I, ha I have some mirrors that I made sure to buy. If you guys want to play around with them, one side right here is the slightly outward side, one side's the inward side. If you guys want to like try these out a little bit while I'm talking and share them around the classroom, feel free to kind of mess around with these two lenses. Okay. While you're doing that though, see that you can try to still pay attention though. I want to talk here on this slide and on future slides how light is reflecting. Okay. On this one right here, this will be the convex side right here. What ends up happening is light is going to scatter outwards in many different directions. Now, this picture right here, I've already drawn on top of a little bit. Let me see what I can explain what's happening. Because it's no longer a straight surface, this V has actually been cut in half through the middle. Can you guys see how like it's been cut in half, 90 degrees right there? And right here, it's been cut in half as well. And the light is actually going to scatter in all directions. This is literally the definition of something diffuse. It is scattering in different directions. Now, what's useful about this, though, is that if I am standing over here, I can see something that's over here. And if I'm standing over here, I can see something that's over here. It actually gives you a really wide viewing range because of the fact that the light scatters in such like a almost a 180 degree arc, right? That's the whole point of these is for being security is that you can actually see like basically in all of those directions is where light can reflect from. The concave ones are a little bit more limiting. Concave causes all of the light rays to converge into one spot. It's called the focal spot, the focal length. And I've got some more slides talking about that later. Um, but we actually use this as a source. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll put a light object right here. And this is going to emanate light out in all directions. And in all directions, that's nice. But what ends up happening is when it goes like this, it shoots it back that way. And when it goes like this, it shoots it back this way. This is actually how your headlights work on your car. Have you ever seen that before? I'll try to draw a better picture here. But the way the headlights work on your car is that you have a light bulb. This is a light bulb right here. And the light bulb is supposed to shoot light out this way right here. But what happens is behind the light bulb, they put a mirror. And so any light that goes this way sends it that way. And any light that goes this way sends it that way. Right? And so now more light rays are going the direction you want them to be, which is really cool. So, oh, here's some more terms I need you guys to know. It's a very vocabulary heavy day. Whenever you have a curved mirror, it's a little bit of geometry. There's a lot of math, like geometry, not trigonometry, but similarish kind of concepts to it. You need to know how to do the center of a sphere. Okay? These, these um, lenses that we're working with, really, this is almost as though you took a circle and kept it going. And you just have just a fraction of it. Does that make sense how like that curved thing right there? You could make an entire sphere out of it. And so if you did, somewhere there is going to be the center of a circle. So that's a term I need you guys to know is where the center of a sphere would be. We clearly don't have an entire sphere, but it could be. The focal point is a point we're going to talk about a lot here. Here's what you guys need to know. The distance of the focal length is always half the radius. So if you had a full circle that looked like this, but we were to make a mirror only out of, say, this section right here, from here to here would have been a radius. The focal length would be right here. This will be the center. This will be the focal length. And I'll talk about how the focal length matters as we get going more. The principal axis is basically it's passing through the center and perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. So that basically is this line right here. It goes through the center, and it's 90 degrees to the mirror like that, to the best of your ability. And then we're going to talk about the vertex, the object, and the image. So the object is the source of the rays. The image, there's actually lots of different types of images. We've already talked about virtual images, where you like perceive it to be somewhere that it's not. I'm also going to talk later today about something called a real image. So let's try an example here. Here's a picture of a curved surface. And if any of you guys have 
one of the mirrors in front of you, take a look on the concave side and take a look what the image looks like. It hopefully, if you can see anything, you gotta hold it kind of far away from you though. Hopefully it looks upside down. Okay, I'm gonna go back a few slides just for one that you guys can see here. Here's the picture of the spoon. If you look into the concave side of the spoon, you'll actually see an image upside down. And therein lies the question like, how in the world did your brain interpret a picture upside down? Like, how did that occur? That's what we're gonna try to describe with this picture here. Okay. Here's what happens. Here is an object. I don't care what the object is. So often we just draw an arrow, but like, why don't we draw it as a person? Here is a person right here. Okay. Light hits this person and bounces off this person, off the mirror, and reflects inwardly, because that's what a concave mirror does, is it inwardly reflects the light. And you guys can hopefully see that this incoming ray and the outgoing ray have like a nice little even amount there. Well, light could also bounce off this person and go that way, or go that way, or go this way. So one of the light rays went this way, but let's say another light ray happened to go this way. It would bounce off the mirror down here, also hit a nice little even perfect surface right there, and it would bounce back this way. Where the light rays converge, one light ray converged here, so did this one in black right here. They converged right here. And you'll notice that compared to it being up originally, it's actually gone down now. And that kind of helps to explain why the image is now upside down is it's the way in which the rays finally converged again. This one went here to here, and this one went here to here, and where the rays converged again was right here. You perceive this as being upside down. Yeah, that's the way your brain interprets it. I've got a ton more pictures, so I'm just gonna kind of go through them one at a time here. Here's your reflection rules, okay, if we wanna, when we eventually draw these. Anything that is parallel to the principal axis always reflects through a focal point. That's actually a really nifty trick that always seems to happen. Here is a ray, ray one. See how it is going parallel to the main red axis right here? As soon as it hits the surface right here, it bounces through the focal point. Remember how the focal point is like halfway between the radius? It always seems to go through the focal point, no matter where you are. Okay. I'll even draw another one here. Let's say I drew another ray that went like this. It would bounce through this focal point right here. And hopefully you would agree that the angle that was made right here, here's a 90 degree angle, these two angles here are the same as each other. So that's rule number one. Anything that came in parallel goes through the focus. Rule two, anything that goes through the focus becomes parallel. So here's a green ray that went through the focal point. It's gonna pop back out at a parallel angle. Again, if I were to make like a 90 degree angle right here, this angle and this angle here should be about the same. So make something go through a focal point, it pops up parallel. Third one, let's say a ray goes through the center of the circle. This doesn't happen a lot, but if you can make a ray go through where the center would be, it actually reflects right back on itself. If a ray went from here all the way to here, this would be 90 degrees exactly, and so it would bounce right back upon itself. Well, here's what that means. When we find where all these rays converge, if I continue these lines going forward, where these rays converge, that is where we perceive the image to be. And so sometimes we perceive what's known as a virtual image, where it's almost like you wanna reach behind the mirror and grab it, because it's behind there, but it's not really behind there. The opposite then is what's known as a real image. And I'll try to show you those in more photos. So, more pictures. Again, this is a concave mirror. Okay, let's look at the blue images first. Let's say that this object right here sent out rays in all directions, right? Light hits this object, and a ray goes this way, and 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 like one hits the mirror over here. Well, as it hits the mirror over here, it went back this way. Here's one that hit the mirror there, came back this way. Here's one that hit the mirror here, bounced back this way. What ended up happening is I perceived the image to be right here, and I also perceive it to be upside down. It originally was right side up, and I perceive it upside down. And it also doesn't matter where you're looking from. This person right here perceives that it's right here. This person right here perceives that it's there. This person here perceives that it's there as well. Hypothetically, let's say a person was standing right here, 
and this person was trying to look, um, it would need to go there to there in order for it to like bounce properly. But is there a mirror over here? No, so they would, like a person standing here would not be able to see this object over here. If that makes sense. A person standing over here does not have the capability of seeing this object right here, because for it to do that, the light would have to have bounced into a spot where the mirror doesn't even exist. Here's another picture down below. It's the picture of a candle upright, right? And what ends up happening is this line was drawn through the focal point and then popped out parallel. This line was drawn out parallel and popped it out through the focal point, and it shows that upside down image. So now we have an explanation for why do you see something upside down? Well, it's just the ways that, it's the ways that the rays converge on each other. Okay. It's kind of abstract, eh? Like it's really hard to fully wrap your head around this, I find. It helps when you can test a few things, though. More pictures. What happens if you have an object that's really, 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 really close to the mirror? Okay. You ever take a look in one of, the, one of those um, concave mirrors and you put it really close to yourself? It can actually make something appear larger, in fact. Okay. Um, if anybody has a mirror nearby, flip it to the concave side and like try to look at your nose in it. <laughs> it makes your nose look massive. Right? <laughs> or at least look at your eye or something like that, right? If you bring the concave side really close to you, you can actually see something in the concave side very large. Here's why. I'm going to use those same sort of rules. I'm going to take an object really close here, and I'm going to draw rays off of this. One ray right here, I'm going to draw it, going parallel to the mirror, and then bouncing back to the focal point. Now, this one right here, it can't actually go through the focal point, because if it goes that way right there, that's like going the wrong way. But let's assume that it started at the focal point and kept going this way. It would make it come out that way here. And you'll notice that in the second diagram right here, this line and this line here, they don't converge ever. Right? Here's a line that went from here to there. And here's a line that went from here to there. These two lines here don't converge. But if we, our brain is going to perceive it as though these lines kept going, on the opposite side of the mirror. And your brain is going to perceive this candle as being really big behind the mirror. And this is a principle that you can use to make things like in a fun house. You know, you guys know like those fun houses that make you look big and tall and fat and wide and stuff like that, right? That's what they use these mirrors for to make somebody look taller. Okay. This would be another example of what's known as a virtual image though, because is the candle actually behind the mirror? No, your brain just is perceiving it as though it is. Okay. Here's the opposite way. This is now looking at a convex lens. And this is the one where like, they all spread out, right? What ends up happening is when light comes off the object, it goes that way. And when it comes off here, it goes that way. And what's useful about this is that any person right here, I can see this object right here by looking in the mirror, and it'll bounce it back that way there. And this a person over here can also see that same corner. But what's unique is that in this example right here, everybody perceives the image to be inside the mirror. So we call this a virtual image. There isn't actually something inside the mirror. If someone over here wanted to look at that spot right there, they wouldn't be able to see anything because the mirror doesn't go far enough for them to see it. This guy right here, by the way, I need to go back a slide. If it's not a virtual image, if it's an image that's like upside down and in the wrong spot, I have no idea why this vocabulary was chosen, but the word used is real. They call that a real image. I, I don't get why they use the word real, because like it's not like it's actually there either. It's just that's where your brain sees it as. In both cases, your brain, like the actual object is here, and you're just perceiving it to be here. That's just the vocabulary we use. Long story short, though, if your brain is going to perceive that the object is like behind the mirror, it's virtual. Oh, yeah, that's been a lot of pictures here. Um, yeah, I think I've done enough pictures here. Let's move, let's move to these ones here, and then we'll do some of the math questions. So find this one here as one last example, and then I want us to try some stuff. Because I can talk about this for a day, and you still may not get it. You need to try it. Let's say there's an object right here. And you, as a person, are going to look in the mirror. 
what are you going to perceive this object as being? Okay. You're going to perceive the object as being upside down and smaller. And hopefully you can see through the ray diagrams why. Light's going to go off of this object right here and bounce down there. Light's going to go off of this object right here and bounce towards your eye. Other light will bounce through the center and bounce right back again. And what's going to happen is all three of these lines, blue, green, and red, they all converged right here. Which means that a person right here believes that this object is upside down and small. A person up here is also going to see it right there. A person right here, if this is their eye, will also perceive it being right there. But a person over here won't be able to because the light, like they, they can't see the mirror in the right spot. Take the object now. Do you have a question? Or are you just trying to say? For which one here? Well, because what ends up happening is based on where this person is located, this ray came in, hit the mirror, and came directly to them. But like that means that this spot right here, they're perceiving it as being here. So it's now upside down compared to where it used to be. Okay. Put another person, let's put another person right here. I'll see if I can draw an eye. Here's another person right here. What ended up happening with them is the light went straight and bounce to them, but they also perceive it right here. A person right here in the middle, basically what would have happened is light would have bounced like this, it would have hit the surface, come out at the exact same angle, and like this would also be even here and here, and the exact same thing. This person would also perceive the image to be upside down in the mirror. Okay, so let's try an example where we do some drawing if you have a straight ruler, that really helps. But if you don't, like, it'll still work, okay? But if you can, try to use a straight ruler if possible. Okay. Let's try to draw a ray diagram for the following curved mirror. Okay. And so this is meant to be on the convex side of it. We have an object on this side right here. We're going to try to figure out where this image is going to appear to people. Okay. So using a straight edge if you can, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I am going to draw a straight line exactly parallel. See how I drew a straight line right here in black? Is this going to go back in like this or out like that? Yeah, it's going to go out. So I actually don't want, I need to like delete this line right here. I'll just pull that to the side. But this is going to diffuse out. Now if I want to figure out where it's going to diffuse out, it actually bounces through the focal point. So I have to try to like manipulate this line. Oh, Come on. Well, I did my best. There. That's more or less through the focal point. But the way I'm drawing the rays is that rays would have come from here and diffused out like that. Now that is one type of ray that could come from the spot right here. Let me use another color now. Let's say that a ray ended up going more on this trajectory like this. So I'll use a red color now. Let's say that a ray started going this way. What's going to end up happening is when it goes through the focal point, it actually bounces back parallel. And so we need a line that goes. This is actually going to bounce back. Nope, not what I wanted. Line. There we go. Line. It's going to make a line that's going to go back like this. Can I show that one more time? The black line went in parallel and it diffused back outwards as though it emanated from the focal point. The red line was going towards the focal point, and as soon as it hit the mirror, it bounced back this way right here. Okay. Now, I don't have a center on this circle, but I could try to label one. If from here to here is the focal length, then wouldn't the center be somewhere about right there? Right? Like from here to here is the focal length. Well, double it to get the center. If I want to draw my final line, 
what would happen if I drew this in green is if I aimed this directly at the center, ooh, I didn't do this very well at all. My center needs to be more there. I'm gonna have to redo this line again. Let's extend this, we need to extend this guy right there. If light were to go directly from here to the center, oh goodness, this is not a very nice mirror. I think the reason why is that this mirror isn't curved enough. <laughs> It's a pretty lame curve. What should happen, though, is all three of these lines should, in theory, converge in the same spot. Okay, I'm going to fix where my center is. Okay, I know I drew the center out there, but because this is not to scale, can you guys agree that this, like, this this mirror, I, I, drew, I drew it way too, uh, too like, too um, straight. Okay. So even though the center should be twice as far, I'm going to put the center more, like, right here. Okay, because I've kind of goofed this up a little bit. If I now draw this line, I hope this works finally. I'm going to draw it from here through the center. Yeah, close enough. What should happen is all three lines should be converging in the same spot. Okay. And what ends up happening is you're going to perceive this line and this line and this line all converging right here. And you're going to see an image that is going to be smaller. And it's going to be as though it's like behind the mirror. So we're going to call that a virtual image because that's where all of the lines kind of would converge. I'll try more examples on this with you guys later. But I think the only reason why the third line is not converging is because I didn't draw this, this curved surface very well. I'll try another one. Do I have another example next after this? Okay. Let me try doing a better one. I'll try to, I'll try to like redo one. Here, let's try this. I'm going to draw a circle. Here's the center. And I'm going to draw a nice big circle around it that hopefully is nice and consistent. Okay. And then I'm going to erase a whole bunch of it because I just want to make a mirror out of it like that. Maybe this works a little bit better. It's more to scale. If this right here is the center, then the focal point would be halfway. Does that make sense? So let's just put an object somewhere on, uh, on, on the line. I'm going to put a line right through all of this just so it's nice and flat here. And let's put an image, let's put an object, let's say right about here. So let's try this one again. Let's figure out where this object is going to show up at now. I think I can do this one better with my lines now that it's drawn to scale. The first one, if I drew a line completely parallel, it would then reflect back through, no, that's not going to work. It's going to then reflect through the focus like this. So light would do this. Light would come in this way, and it would bounce back this way. Let's say that light didn't go that way. Let's say that light went through the focal point instead. Let's say that light was going through the focal point instead. What would happen then is it would bounce back out yeah, that's not a good spot. Let's try this better. Was I trying to do them on the backwards one there? Oh, well, I, I was doing it on the wrong side. Let me try the second one again. Okay, let me finish this one here, and I'll try one more time. Lenses are a pain in the butt here. Yeah, because this is where they converge now. Let me finish doing this one first, though. So what ends up happening is this one's going to go in like this. And then it's going to bounce back this way, right? So it came in through the focal point, and it's going to bounce back this way. And I can already see that these two things are converging right about here. Okay. If I do a third line, which goes like this from here, why don't I put it through the center, and it hits right here, then when it bounces right back on itself, again, all three of these points are going together, and hopefully you're going to see an image that is upside down and smaller. Now, that was me using a convex one right here. Okay. So why don't I try it one more time, and I'll try to use a concave one. And you guys can maybe redo the diagram I screwed up here. So maybe I'll try one more time. But this would make something be upside down. Hurry up. No, go ahead. That's Yeah, the black is like, well, this one went through the center. And when it went through the center, it then came back the exact same way it had right here. And where all of these rays should be in the same spot. Yeah, 
That's why when I tried this on this slide right here, it didn't work very well because they didn't end up in the same spot. They should have, but they didn't. So I'll try, I'll try another one. This is literally the first question on your assignment, by the way. So, and I'll help with this if you need. Let me try doing this again. I'm going to try using a circle like this. I'll draw the center in the middle. And um, then when I erase this half right here, though, is that the same as the picture we had, the original one? No, I need the other side. Okay, hang on, let me undo that. Let's erase this side right here. Okay, this should now look similar to the image that I screwed up in your notes. Let's put a line right to the middle, like this, a principal axis. And let's put, let's see, where's the arrow? The arrow is supposed to be right about here. Okay. So if this is the center right here, it's my center, then about halfway here is the focal length. Let me try one more time. Let's see if I can do this better now. Line number one. Anything that tries to go through the focal point will eventually end up going, no, oh, not right there, not that one. Anything that tries to go through the focal point will end up going parallel. So what should happen is as these rays come in like this, they should bounce back like that one. Hopefully I did that one better this time. Let's try another one. Anything that comes in, oh, that's not very straight. In red then. Anything that comes in parallel would then try to go through the focus like this. So let's draw where the, the way, way the light rays go, though. The light rays would then diffuse, and so they would come in like this and bounce out like that. As of right now, where do these lines converge, the black line and the red line? They converge right about here. If I draw my third line properly, which I think is going to work finally this time, it should also go through that spot. If I had a line go like this, and it was to go right to the center, oh, I keep doing this. If I were to have a third line starting here and going through the center, what would end up happening, yeah, stay with me, is the light rays would start to come in this way, they would hit the mirror, and they would go back the exact opposite way they came. But you would perceive all three, a person standing here would perceive this image as right here. A person standing here would perceive the image from here. A person standing here would perceive the image from here. Everyone would perceive the image to be right here, and it would be a smaller image than it was before. And we would call this a virtual image instead. It takes a while to kind of get used to this, well, it's kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> but hopefully you're starting to see some of the principles. So you got to try the assignment question. Because like the very first one is to try drawing a few of these. Okay. That's the theory. I hate this part, by the way. <laughs> okay. The math is a lot easier. Okay. So let me, let me show you the formulas. You'll probably like this part better. Okay. There are two formulas I need you guys to be able to utilize. And they're fairly straightforward. There's not a whole lot to them there is one link between them. So you can actually go from formula one to formula two. Here's the first formula. If you know the length of the focal point and the distance to the object or the image, you can find the other ones. Okay. And then in this formula right here, if you know the distance to images or height of images or objects, you can find a magnification. Let me show you what I mean by that if I go back a slide. Let me pick, uh, let me pick this one here, I guess. This right here, this is the height of the object, and this is the height of the image. This is the height of the object, this is the height of the image right here and here. The image's height now appears smaller than the original. Okay. The distance to the object would be this distance right here. This would be distance to the object. 
the distance to the image would be right here. And the image almost appears as though it's behind the mirror. Okay. The focal length is from here to there, in case we need that, which is always half of your, your radius. So let me, let me try the math example now. Here's what we have. We have a diverging convex mirror with a radius of 20 centimeters. So I'm going to try to draw a full circle over here. Here's the center of the circle. And this radius right here is 20 centimeters. But I don't want the full circle, so I'm going to like erase most of it like this. If I continue this on like a straight line like this, what this means is that if from here to here is 20 centimeters, we're going to put an object 30 centimeters in front of the meter. So I'm going to estimate that to be about, I don't know, from here to, let's see if that's 20, maybe from here to here is about 30 centimeters. I'm going to put an object right here. So there to there is 20. I'm going to estimate here to here is 30. Now we want to try to figure out where the image is going to appear and how tall it will be, because I'm going to tell you it's five centimeters tall. First, let's practice drawing some ray diagrams. This is a worthwhile skill to practice. So draw them one line at a time again. I'm going to draw a line completely. I need my line tool again. Let's make it black. I'm going to draw a line completely parallel. What does a parallel line try to go through? The focal point. Do I even have a focal point listed yet? Okay. So the focal point's going to be right about there. I'm going to make this line then in black again go from here through the focal point. And if I were to draw some arrows, light from here is going to diverge. So it's going to go from here, there to there to there. It's going to diverge like this. Next one. I'm now going to take a line. I'll make this one red. And I'm going to make it go through the focal point. So from here through the focal point like this. But what ends up happening when it goes through the focal point is as soon as it hits the surface of the mirror here, it starts to go parallel. So right about here, it's now going to go parallel. So if I were to draw some arrows here in red, light would go this way, this way, this way, this way, hit the mirror, and bounce back this way, and diffuse, going opposite directions. Hopefully the last one now works. I'll use yellow for the last one. If light went from here directly through the center, it would bounce right back on itself. So light would then go in, 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 hit the mirror, and go right back the way it came. And it would actually end up going that way. Does this line right here, this line right here, and this red line right here, do they diverge, or do they, do they converge on the same side of the mirror? Well, no, they don't. But if you draw it well enough, you might notice that right here, all three lines hit the exact same spot. The black line, the red line, and the yellow line all hit the exact same spot. So I am expecting to see an image that is still going to be right side up, but it's going to be much smaller, very small, hopefully. And it's going to be a virtual image because it's going to feel like it's behind the mirror somehow. Let's do the math to prove this. Okay? So first formula. The formula on the previous page is 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. So here's your formula. 1 over f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. What information do we know? Well, we know the focal length. Kind of. What is the focal length? Yeah, 10, right? Because the whole thing was 20. It's 10. So we're going to make a 1 over 10. How far was it to the object? Well, from the mirror to the object was 30. 
I now want to figure out what the distance is to the image that's kind of appearing inside the mirror. So all we got to do is the math for this. So you got to do 110 equals 1 over 30 plus 1 over di. Now, we haven't used a lot of reciprocal fractions so far. So here's what I'd recommend. Do 1 tenth minus 1 30th to get 1 over di. So what is 1 tenth minus 1 30th? I ended up getting uh, 0 0.066666 equals 1 over di. And then if you know how to take a reciprocal on your calculator and just do like the minus 1 button, if you make it go to the minus 1, I ended up getting this answer here. di was 15. Good point. It doesn't have to be in meters because if you're consistent with your units, your answer will just be in centimeters now. Does that make sense though? Like you could move it into meters, but it's 15 centimeters. Let's talk about the context of that now though. Does it not feel like from here to here should be 15 centimeters? Somewhere in that ballpark? Okay. Now I didn't draw this to scale by any means, but that, I mean, it actually should maybe be a little less than that perhaps. Let me just check my math. 1 tenth minus 1 thirtieth reciprocaled. Yeah, it's in the ballpark. I probably should have actually had them converge maybe over here more. So I didn't draw it exactly to scale, but like it's in the right realm of possibility. Okay. Let me do the next equation. It now wants to know the magnification. To calculate the magnification on the previous slide, magnification can either be found by taking the height of the image and the height of the object and dividing them, or the distance of the image and the distance of the object and dividing them. So I now know the distances. Yeah, this should have given me a negative number. Why didn't it? 1 over 10. Yeah. 1 over 30, because that's the object. 1 over di image. 1 tenth minus 1 thirtieth. Why didn't we get a negative number? It isn't. I know. I'm trying to think of why we didn't get a negative number here. Let's place 30 centimeters in front of the mirror, and that was a diverging mirror. Should be a positive number, right? And then when you reciprocal it, the 15 does make sense. That's what we're looking for, yeah, because we're looking, we're looking for this distance right here. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's not familiar to the focal length. Hmm. Because we should have got a positive. I don't know why we would get a negative here. Okay. Anyways, let's try the magnification here. To get the magnification, the formula would be to take, where is it here? Take the distance of the image, divide by the distance to the object. So the distance to the image was 15. I'm going to ignore the negative right now. I've got to try to figure out why it's not negative. But the distance to the image was 15. The distance to the object was 30. 15 divided by 30 means we should have a magnification of a half. Ignore, ignore the negative right now. I've got to figure out why we're missing a negative here. Yeah. Is, is supposed to become smaller. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe we're making a negative on this so that the magnification means we're getting smaller. No, that would make it upside down. I'll come back to this. I'll figure out what's wrong here. Here's what I need you guys to be able to do, though. Can you guys do 15 divided by 30? However big this is right here, this now image should be half as big as it. Yeah, because it's making it half as big, right? So. Okay, let's try another example here. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll spend more time later when you guys aren't wasting class time figuring out where that missing negative sign came from. I'm not sure what we did wrong. Let's try another one, though. Let's say you have a converging mirror this time. So I'm going to draw a circle that looks like this, center in the middle. Um, it says the focal length is 15, which means that this distance right here, this better be 15. That better be 15 more for a grand total of 30. And I'm going to now erase like this half of it over here. greatest mirror in the world. But. Okay. This is now going to be a converging mirror. I 
think I want to make this a little bit bigger, actually. Hang on a sec. Let me try it one more time. I want a bigger circle. Go there. That can be the focal length. This right here is 15. And we'll erase part of the circle like that. Is everybody okay with that to start? We're now going to put an object 20 centimeters away. So if from here to here is 15, then 20 centimeters means that I've got an object right about here, let's say. Because okay. here to here is 15, this is now a little bit further away than that. Okay. Let's try drawing our ray diagrams first. We're almost done, by the way. I've got one slide left after this, I think, right? Yeah, the picture slide. So, let me draw a line going straight at the mirror, and then I'm going to bounce it through the focal point. This means that rays are going to go like this and bounce like that. Next. Let's draw a line through the focal point and then have it go parallel. This means that it's going to come in like this and bounce back like that. I can already see where I think these two lines are converging. I believe they're converging right there. I'm expecting an upside down image, hopefully. What happens when you look inside a spoon? It looks upside down. Now, this next one's kind of hard to draw because I can't actually draw through the center. But imagine that I kept going on the circle. Remember how the circle did look like this all the way around? If I could go through the center, from this object right here, ugh, through the center, this isn't even going to work. No. Ideally, these things would line up nicely, but I don't think I can even do that. So maybe even drawing through the center won't even work. Because if I try drawing through the center like this, it makes it show up over here. So somewhere back here, it looks like I have an upside down image. I'm not exactly to scale, but hopefully that more or less makes sense there, is that I should have an, a, an image behind me Upside down. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, right? So here it's going through the center, hitting the mirror, and going directly back. The only problem is it's converging right about there. So since I didn't draw it to scale, ideally all these lines would have ended up in the same spot. But I'm kind of roughing it. I'm assuming that it's somewhere back here is where these lines converge if I drew it like exactly. So I'm expecting an image behind me upside down, and I think it's going to be bigger. Let's try the math for this now. OK, I now know where my mistake was on the previous example. Oh, Chris. OK, can I go back and fix the previous example after this? It's such a dumb mistake. I misplaced the negative sign. I didn't think about this bit right here. The ultra special notes for using the mirror equation. Anything in front of the mirror, you use positives for. Anything behind the mirror, you use negatives for. When I was doing. When I was doing this example right here, where was it? This one right here, this 20 centimeters should have been a negative. That should have been a negative right there. That's what I screwed up on. Hey, it's Chris. Hey. I do, yeah. On the phone or in person? Ammer. Um, Jackie from Foods is calling for you. Um, she just wants to talk to you on the phone, I guess. Sorry, guys, I realized what my stupid mistake was right now. I forgot to make anything behind the mirror negative. So in our previous example right here, this 20 centimeters right here should have been negative 20 centimeters, which means that the 10 centimeters should have been a negative 10. That's what I screwed up. So I'll go back and I'll fix that maybe in a second. Let's finish the question we're on, and then we're almost done for the day. Because, Guys, I'm sorry. That really screwed things up there. Let me try this example now, do it properly. Since nothing is on the opposite side of the mirror here, I don't need to worry about using any negative signs. Since everything is on this side of the mirror, I'll use positive. Okay. So let me try this one more time. Okay, so the formula is 1 over f equals 1 over d. Guys, shh. I know it's a long lesson, but try to stay with me. Here's your formula. 
unlike the previous example where I screwed up and I didn't use negatives and positives properly, here everything should be positive because it's all on the same side of the mirror. Nothing's like on the opposite side. So this will be 1 over 15 equals 1 over, the object was 20 centimeters away, I guess, so 1 over 20 plus 1 over di. So what we need to do now is do 1 15th minus 1 20th and make it equal to 1 over di. One fifteenth minus one twentieth reciprocal. I get this. Di, I got sixty out of. Now my diagram is not nearly to scale, but doesn't it make sense that if from here to here was fifteen, and here to here was twenty, isn't my image? Didn't I think my image was going to be way behind it? That actually kind of makes sense. Maybe it doesn't look like it's to scale at 60, but it definitely makes sense that it's like behind me now. So 1 15th, 1 20th, and 1 di gets me 60. Then let's use the next formula. The next formula is magnification is equal to, let's see, what is it? It's negative di over do. So negative di over do. Negative, well, my di... The image was 60. The object was 20. 60 divided by 20 means my magnification is negative three times. Now it actually makes sense because why is there a negative? Because this image is now upside down. Okay? And from where I started to where I finished, I know it's not to scale, but doesn't it seem bigger than when I started? Let me go back and fix the one I screwed up then. If you guys want to try this yourself. On the one that I screwed up here, this shouldn't have been 1 tenth. Because the 10 is on the opposite side, these are the positive numbers. Those are the negative numbers. This should have been 1 over negative 10. So what we should actually should have had is negative a tenth minus a 30th. I should retry that one now. Negative a tenth minus a 30th. reciprocal. Oh, this is going to make way more sense now. That's what I got to. There we go. I'm sorry, guys, that I screwed you up there. I guess it was a good learning moment, though. Don't script the negative and positives. Okay. So now I got a negative 7.5. And let's talk about that. Why should this number be negative? Because it's on that side of the mirror. And actually, the, this, this, the range makes sense now, too. But I think this was 20, and this was 10. So 7.5, actually, Kind of makes sense now. Three bucks. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So if you get a positive value, it means it's on this side right here. That means it must be real. I have no idea why they use the word real. Okay. Okay. But virtual is if it shows up on this side over here. Anything on this side over here, the analogy is like if you almost could reach behind the mirror, it would feel like that's where it was coming from. Okay. Uh, why don't I wrap up? Because, guys, I've been talking for 58 minutes here. Thank you for being patient. I know it's a long lesson. This is a good summary of what we learned about now. Okay. I like this picture. It's got three and one. I want you to notice the, the little details in this picture right here. Here is a candle that is in front of the mirror. And now the candle's upside down. Right? We've now shown you, hopefully, how you can make some rays cause this candle to be upside down. Okay. Note the rest of the room, by the way. The rest of the room is also upside down. Can you see that, like, compared to this one over here, the room is also upside down. But here's a candle that's been put really, really, really close to the mirror. Can you guys see how the candle's kind of far back right here? And now they've pushed the candle close to the mirror. So close to the mirror that when you see the candle, it actually appears almost as though it's inside the mirror, upside down. Or sorry, right side up. But check out the rest of the room. Although the candle is right side up, the rest of the room is upside down. Because the candle is the only thing really close to the mirror. Finally, this would be the convex mirror right here. And here, the candle appears smaller, but... Can you, like, I feel like this is the best one to describe a virtual image. I almost feel like I want to reach inside the mirror and grab that second candle. 
because it feels like it's behind, right? Both of these right here should probably be virtual images, and this one here is probably a real image. Okay, that's all I've got. There's not a lot you can do with this section for right now, but it wouldn't hurt if you get some time to practice the first question on your assignment, okay? Where you have a chance to try to draw some of these ray diagrams. I've done some examples. It's not easy for me to do them on the board here. So if you can, try to use a ruler. And I guess make sure, make sure that you don't screw up the ultra special notes. Make sure that you do negative and positive, unlike me, because I kind of goofed you guys up for a bit. Okay, I'll pause the video now.